So we left off in the last video talking about uh, the function f of x uh, is equal to 1 over x. 1 over x. And so we know that this function looks something like this. Like that and something like that, right? This is y is equal to 1 over x. It's a graph. Okay, so uh, we talked about um, we talked about the limit as f of x goes to infinity, and so that's going this way. And we talked about the limit as f of x goes to negative infinity that way. Um, now these are actually one-sided limits because remember, say if we wanted the limit uh, at x is equal to one, the well that would equal just one, um, and we would put in one point zero 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 one and zero point nine 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 nine. Right? We would be coming from both sides to check that that's the right limit. But when we're going up to infinity, we can only put in numbers from the left side. Right? You can't come from the far side of infinity. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and same thing with uh, negative infinity. We're coming only from the right side. You can't come from the other side. There is no other side, really. So that's a, the first kind of one-sided limit that you've seen. Now in this function, um, we're going to examine the limit here already here. The limit of um, 1 over x as x goes to 0. So at 0, this function doesn't exist, right? Um, we can't divide by 0. So now, the notation that we're going to use here, um, so we're going to have three different things. We'll have limit as x goes to 0, uh, 1 over x, and we'll do this once more time. Limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to find the limit as it comes from the right side. So we're going to put a little positive sign here indicating it comes from the positive side, from the right side. And we're going to put a negative sign here indicating we were finding the limit as it comes from this side. Which is what we were doing before for all of the limits previously. Um, but now we're just going to examine because here you can see visually that they're not going to the same place. So. Um, let's solve for this one first, the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side. So we're dividing 1 divided by uh, 0 0.001 is 1000, and 1 divided by 0 0.0001 would be 10,000. It just keeps going up and up, and you're going to see that this is equal, well, as x goes to 0, the f of x is going towards infinity. So we'll write it like this, infinity. But, no, this is kind of weird. Um, as x gets small, f of x gets large, right? As we get smaller and as small as we possibly can towards zero, um, f of x is going to get as big as possible, you know, going towards infinity. But infinity isn't like a tangible number. We can't actually, you know, describe infinity. It's not like it's a million or 10 million or a billion or anything. So technically, um, we would say this limit does not exist. Um, but for notation wise, you would just write that the limit, the right handed limit is infinity. And likewise for the left handed limit, we can see here it's going down towards negative infinity and we could put in the same values and we would find that this is equal to negative infinity. So technically these, you wouldn't, these limits don't really exist, but because it's not going to a specific number, but you just write down that it is equal to infinity or positive infinity, just kind of for reference. And so also, because we're not approaching the same number, you know, for example, we're not approaching um, f of x is equal to 1 or something at both ends, right? These are completely different directions. So um, the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0 just does not exist. You heard it like this, d and e does not exist. So let's look at another example now. Um, say we have a function that's described like this. Let's say f of x is equal to, um, and we'll have a few different parameters here. It would be say is equal to x squared for uh, numbers smaller than or equal to zero. Sorry, x squared. And we'll say is equal to two um, for numbers that are greater than zero. So what does a uh, quick graph of this would look like? Something like this. So x squared for including this point 
would go up like that, and uh, this would say it'd be a two, it would go like that, right? And it goes off that way. So we want to evaluate the limit of this function at x. Uh, let's do the three, the same three here. Um, so the limit at zero, limit um, as x goes to zero of this function of f of x x goes to zero. And we can see here, if we put in numbers um, coming from the left side, uh, here, let's just copy this three times. Um, mm -hmm. All right, and so we'll put in, uh, again, this was from the positive side and the negative side. So as we come from the positive side, the right-hand side, um, we see that it's going to be, as it approaches 0, as x approaches 0, it's going to be numbers, it's always going to be 2, actually. The right-hand side is a constant function. So the limit on the right-hand side is 2. Now the limit on the left-hand side, as we put in numbers closer and closer to 0, um, and 0 squared, or number, like really small numbers, uh, so we'll have negative 0 0.0001 squared, and etc., uh, we are going to be approaching x is equal to 0. So the left-handed limit of this function is 0. The right-handed limit of the function is 2. And the limit of the function at 0, again, does not exist because the two limits are not approaching the same number. So another one that we can look at is, say we want to find the limit of, let's say, sine of x as x goes to infinity. So if we put in values for uh, sine of x, say uh, if x is equal to 100, let's write it here, sine of 100 is equal to, it's about negative 0 0.5. Um, if we put in bigger numbers, sine of, let's say, 1000, we get a number that's around uh, positive 0 0.82. And let's do one more, let's say sine of 10,000. 10,000. And we get another, we get negative, uh, it's about negative 0 0.3. So this is all over the place, just as we get it bigger. And that's because, that makes sense, because the graph of sine of x, uh, let's do it here. Um, this, the graph of sine of x looks something like this. It just oscillates um, between positive 1 and negative 1. Um, and so, sorry, that actually goes through the origin. And so it's just going to keep going on and on and on. So it's never actually approaching anything, really. It just oscillates. So the limit of sine of x as x goes to infinity, again, uh, does, I can't write does not exist. And uh, for one more example, let's look at uh, let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of let's say sine of x over x. So right away we know well this isn't part of the limit, but we know that this function is discontinuous at zero. By the way, uh, but what, what's happening here is we're going to be, um, when we put in, let's say, sine of x, uh, when we had sine of x, uh, sine of 100 is 0 0.5, we're going to divide that by 100, right? And then sine of t uh, 1000 was negative 0 0.82, we're going to divide that over here by 1000. And sine of 10,000 uh, was negative 0 0.3, we're going to divide that by 10,000. So you see these numbers, even though they're oscillating between one, uh, positive 1 and negative 1, they are um, being progressively divided by a bigger number. So this, this function here uh, would look something like this. Uh, let's start a bit bigger. Uh, so it doesn't really go through there, but as we go up, it's going to kind of go like this and get closer and closer to zero. I hope you can see that. So the limit of sine of x over x as x goes to infinity would be equal to zero, because it is approaching 
0 as x gets large. And another way that textbooks like to describe this is as x gets large, f of x gets small, so the limit is 0.